Hello and welcome back to Spec. And today I get to open up Warhammer Conquest issue number 57. Finally! Ah, it's hobby time. Oh man, I've been waiting for this. Ah, this is that sound. Yep, that's brilliant. Look, 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 see the cover. Yes. Okay. So what have we got? We've got our two paints. So we've got our temple guard. Oh, let's get focus. Hold, stay still, don't drop. So we've got our temple guard blue, and we have our thousand suns base. So one's a layer and one's a base. Uh, for those of you which are new, I know you've been doing this for a while now. If you follow the instructions, you would have just followed it along, but you might not notice that they have base coating and a layer coating. Base coating goes down and layer coating goes on top. You don't need a lot of this to make the color come through if you have the right base. Try and get them fairly similar or matching together and they work well. Uh, you're gonna see that with the plasma tips I'll show you. Now that's out of the way. Let's get to this magazine. Still $7.99, which is fantastic. We have a wonderful piece of artwork there, which is the Raven Guard. And these guys are the Stealthy Boys. These are super stealthy boys but we'll get to that later. Uh, for those of you which have been playing Warhammer, you might have already got your, you know, your selected chapter or your supplement. I've noticed that the magazines have been planned directly in correlation with those supplement releases. So we've had like our Imperial Fist uh, items, our Salamanders recently, and this. So it's quite impressive. I wonder what else they're gonna do, uh, which is in alignment. But anyway, let's have a look this time gaffing on we know this time because there's no build we are definitely going to get a lot of lore in this so this is going to be great um we've got our painting which is obviously we've got plasma glow you can use that as a basis these colors for your plasmas but you can use any variation of color just so you know and then we've got our battle i think that's the one i'm interested in so let's have a look at raven guard now my brother loves raven guard or i say loves but that's his first model he painted up was raven guard uh, and it's really good. Unfortunately, I lost a picture. Otherwise, I would have put it in the community uh, pictures. Talking of that, if you wish to send in your pictures to my email, uh, which is specyt at gmail.com, I will showcase them, uh, as always. Once I get enough, that is, you know, you know how it stays. This time, focus on Vigilus. I'd like to see what you've done for your Vigilus gear. So we've got some information on Raven Guard, what they're about, um, and how sneaky they can be. We've got a nice set of um, design work, I call it design work, I should actually say the um, Vexilia or the flag that we saw in the last one, the colours, so to speak. Legacy of Secrecy, mmm, mm, that's how the Horus Heresy started, no, I'm not down with that, we, we, we need to uh, lose a bit of that secrecy. Yeah, these, these are like the, the FBI, should I say. Let's have a look there. We've got some law information. Just having a quick look, see if I see anything there that I'm really interested in. Veterans, uh, Sterngar veterans. Now, these don't see much planned tabletop if you're playing with Primaris. If you're using um, mini marines, you get to have a whole heap of veterans, and they can come with a whole heap of special weapons, which just basically shortcut a lot of things. And here we've got a few here. So if you can go on eBay and get yourself some cheaper models, uh, your Mini Marines, it will be well worth doing so you can upgrade them to veterans. They don't have to have this fancy tabard uh, for that. Ooh, look at this. Wow. Okay, okay. We've got a little bit of a, a Nurgle demon here. We've got this. Okay, purple and green, you probably know in every single comic book, is the villain colors. And this is a, a piece of comic book artwork. You see the pencil work on there. That would be brilliant as a poster if I didn't have the little one, but that's great for Halloween. Uh, thanks guys. <laughs> so we're getting some information on the great unclean one, Kolgath. Um, he's got his own laboratory, mixing, making diseases, spreading them around. And this is actually quite good because we haven't seen much in the way of um, Nurgle demons uh, as of late in the magazines. We've got Zinch, uh, focus on this character, uh, mainly knowledge and intrigue. 
Whereas we've got Plague, Knowledge, Intrigue, and Magic and Change. That's it. Uh, this guy, I don't actually have many models for him, but the Fate Weaver models look absolutely amazing. And actually, Average Old Brit is currently painting up a model on his channel, which is the Forge World uh, Fate Weaver. And it's, it, you know, it looks really good. So we've got our structure for these guys. I mean, unless you're playing like, you know, a thousand suns, you're not really gonna see all of this. We've got some interesting work here. It looks all right. Not my cup of tea, but it is really good work. I mean, I've seen some bases which have been done on Instagram, and this is like a vortex swirl of color, and it just looks amazing. Sometimes the grass, even though it gives kind of a scale to the model, if that's the only base you're using, it kind of can take away from the effect of the overall model, especially something as grand as that. I'm really enjoying the designs there, nice bit of design work. Little layer uh, colouring effect there, lighting source. Now, you may be panicking, like you see a model like this on the shelf and you're like, hey, you know what, I've been collecting an army and now I want to get the Warlord or I want to kind of upgrade and you want to get the big model. Don't stress too much about painting it perfectly. You can always come back and add more paint to the model. Okay, it doesn't mean that you're gonna cover it in one thick coat and then keep adding and adding. But really, get your base colors down, add, and as you get better with your skill, you can start adding more detail and you don't have to do it all at once. Um, and that's the best way that I find it. And also, it gives you more lifetime out of your, your models, your hobby, because you're always gonna go back. You might even be inspired by other people's models and you see something and think you, you wanna give that a go. So when it comes to demon models, strangely enough, these are um, specifically for Zinch. These don't really grab my attention. Uh, all the other factions do when it comes to their design work. But the strange thing is, is I actually like the Thousand Suns for their design aesthetic. So it's really strange that the demons don't quite work, but these uh, marines do. Uh, the Heretic Astartes. Uh, I don't know, but you know, each to their own. So we've got a bit of domains here, showing you who owns what, and again, these are great for campaigns. If you're like having a little map out of missions you want to do, if you combine these maps with the history, you can recreate those battles. I know I talk about it a lot. It's almost like historical wargaming, and this gets missed out on so much. It gives you a narrative, it gives you a story, and it's a lot of fun. Now, yes, if you're just testing numbers and testing stats, if you've got events or ITC or something you want to be doing, um, you don't really need a narrative. You just roll dice until you win. But the best games and the most fun games have always been the ones where there's been an underlying story. And maybe it harkens back to, you know, my old roleplay days. But I think that you, you need that story to make it work. Uh, Glacial Geek tends to always put a little narrative story just before the battle starts. Uh, and that tends to be fun. And these magazines pretty much do the same with the missions at the back. So we've got the information on Demonic Duel. So even though these demons all come from the warp, they all have different intentions and different ways that they work against humanity. And the way that they work causes them to come into conflict most times. So in some cases, if the opposing um, directions of chaos come together and they're on a planet and they wanna see who owns uh, the planet or who would dominate the region, they might end up taking themselves out and then the marines could go in and finish up afterwards or you know the green knights so plasma effects i did have someone mention to me how i painted my plasma and what i find is depending upon the luminosity that you're using of the base colors or how dark they are in contrast and you add a light layer on top sometimes just adding your light layer onto a really dark color will give you this effect so you know that kind of darker blue on the inside there it actually does it automatically uh, you see it with the events that I've done on the reactors as I believe AS was asking so we've got our thousand suns blue continuing there so they're going over the pipes the reactor bits the vents yep we did all of that but that's good to see and it's a good little reminder actually there's quite a lot that we've kind of covered oh I missed that area Got to go back and do that area. Got to do that area. <laughs> That's really handy. I'll probably do those little vents as well just there. Uh, see that I missed us. So scorched earth. So we're looking at plasma. 
Death Guard's attack continues and it's driving the Space Marines back yet further. The small area of the city that remains in Space Marines' hands must be defended at all costs. Okay, so let's take a look at this mission. So we have the Death Guard, as we know, they're kind of winning the battle by the looks of it. We have our objectives, which on the map there, because we're using both maps being brought together. There's a little connector just there, um, which I noticed a little kind of Imperial skull on the floor. We have objectives that need to be held to the end of turn five when you get your points within three inches great you get points uh slay the warlord lord is always one uh, actually look at that at least one enemy unit in the sorry at least one of your units in the enemy's deployment zone at the end of the game is one victory point so they're now introducing line breaker which i'm sure wasn't there before let's have a look at the army so you i think it's going to win three command points for both we've got lord of contagion two squads of five plays marines plague marines even Fetid Bloat Drone, 10 Chaos Cultists, 12 Pops Walkers. Uh, we have Captain in Gravis Armor, 2 Squads of 5 Intercessors, Land Speeder, 3 Hell Blasters, and 3 Aggressors. Hell Blasters. Mm. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, I would probably give that to Death Guard. Because they're so resilient that holding objectives is, is really their thing. Um, so, you know, if you're got some ability there, Cloud of Fries would be great for that if you change over your characters for like your, your malignant playcaster. So deployment, who rolls off, alternate, okay yeah fine. If I was going to do this I'll probably take second turn if I want to roll off. Just so I can see where my opponents position their models so I can try and snipe them off at the end. Or kind of run to contest objectives. It's not always good to go first. Okay, information, guidance, and um, let's have a look, seeing it's fallen off. Next issue, we've got our attack bike. Uh, I know multiples of these would disappear. And we've got another quite large collection of models. Ooh, Hellblasters, two of them. Interceptor, two intercessors. So this now completes our Hellblasters, uh, and our intercessors, and our interceptor squads, uh, which we've got. So that's really good. So I wouldn't be surprised if that magazine sold out like hotcakes as well. So overall, another good issue. Um, I call this a catch-up issue, in the sense that if you're kind of inundated with models and you haven't kind of like painted them yet, this will give you an opportunity to kind of read up on the lore, read up on the information in the last set of magazines, and do a bit of painting at the same time. So it's not it's not too heavy uh, with model building and getting them to play. So that's nice because you're already using what you've got for the mission at the end. So talking of mission at the end, I would love to hear how you get on with that mission. Uh, obviously, I like to know the results of these missions because it kind of adds to my head cannon campaign, so to speak. So um, let me know how it turns out. This has been Spect. I've enjoyed my time. Hope you've enjoyed yours. I'll catch you again soon. And PC out.